my god! Oh my god! On September 27th, the powerful Category 4 Hurricane Helen made landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida, setting off life-threatening storm surges and destroying homes and infrastructure in coastal areas. This record-breaking superstorm brought devastating damage not only to Florida, but also to the entire southeastern United States. This is the third hurricane to hit the area in the past 13 months. Category 4 Hurricanes Idalia in 2023 and Edebi last year both caused severe damage to Florida's coastline. However, experts say Hurricane Helene may be the most powerful to hit the region in recent decades. Scientists have been warning that climate change is driving the intensity and frequency of hurricanes. Sea temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico hit record highs, providing super fuel for the development of this hurricane. This also means that attacks like Helen's may become more frequent and dangerous in the future. Despite widespread evacuations, Hurricane Helene killed dozens of people, left millions of residents without power, and destroyed numerous homes and infrastructure along the coast. What is frightening is that this storm also triggered many thrilling rescue operations and exposed the serious threat of climate change to people's lives. Once the threat of Hurricane Helene became apparent, Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas and other affected states immediately declared a state of emergency. Governors issued mandatory evacuation orders urging residents to leave areas likely to be hit by the storm as soon as possible. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis mobilized thousands of National Guard officers and soldiers to prepare for search and rescue operations. We can't control the intensity and path of this hurricane, but what you can control is what you can do to give yourself the best chance of weathering this storm safely, he told residents. In Florida's Big Bend region, authorities used buses to transport hundreds of thousands of residents to shelters in Tallahassee. But not everyone is willing to leave. Some stubborn residents chose to stay and try to fight the overwhelming storm themselves. Real estate agent David Wesolowski, 37, is one of them. He told reporters, I just want to fix something before the wind gets too strong. If the situation continues to develop like this, the situation will definitely be different later. Patrick Richter also refused to leave the small town of Crawfordville, a few miles inland. I'm going to hunker down to survive a hurricane, the 58-year-old said just as he did when Category 5 Hurricane Michael swept through the area in 2018. In Panasia, John Looper's mother and brother were also determined not to evacuate, so he could only stay with them. They won't leave. I can only stay with them, he said as he filled the oil drum with oil. These stubborn residents may end up paying a heavy price. The National Hurricane Center warned that the storm surge could be a nightmare for residents in Florida's Big Bend region. They will face a dangerous situation that is truly unsurvivable. At 11.10 p.m. on the 27th, Hurricane Helene made landfall near Perry, Florida with a speed of 140 miles per hour. This extremely dangerous Category 4 hurricane has brought devastating consequences to the region. The Big Bend, Florida, area has borne the brunt and been hardest hit. The National Hurricane Center predicts a catastrophic storm surge of 15 to 20 feet in the area, enough to flood homes to the top of their second floors. The accompanying stormy waves may destroy houses and wash away cars, and water levels will rise rapidly. As expected, the storm surge swept through coastal communities, swallowing up homes and infrastructure. In Cedar Key, Florida, video taken by resident Michael Bobbitt documented the scene of complete destruction.
Entire houses disappeared or were razed to the ground, the hardware store disappeared, and the downtown Jiffy food market was completely destroyed. Destroyed, the post office was completely destroyed. Near Perry, resident Lori Lilliet saw the remains of her house, the house had collapsed, torn apart by the raging storm surge, and one corner was still leaning precariously on pilings. Meanwhile, powerful storms toppled trees and power poles, leaving millions of homes without power. As of Friday afternoon, more than 4 million customers were without power in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia, according to the Power Outage website. Georgia also experienced the ravages of Hurricane Helene. Governor Brian Kemp said that in the southern part of the state, some hospitals were forced to lose power and rescuers had to use chain saws to clear debris from roads. The Atlanta metropolitan area suffered severe flooding, with some neighborhoods only accessible by boat. Meanwhile, North Carolina and Tennessee are not immune. In northeastern Tennessee, flooding forced 54 hospital personnel to be moved to the roof of Unicoi County Hospital, where helicopters launched a dangerous rescue operation. In North Carolina, a dam was breached, prompting authorities to issue evacuation warnings for surrounding communities. Although the dam did not fail, officials still worried about the possibility of catastrophic flooding. In addition, tornadoes also wreak havoc in these areas. In Nash County, North Carolina, a tornado seriously injured four people. Meteorologists say these extreme weather events are linked to climate change because they contribute to the intensity and destructiveness of hurricanes. Hurricane Helene brought unprecedented devastation to the southeastern United States. The Big Bend region of Florida was hit hardest, with homes flattened and infrastructure severely damaged. Georgia, North Carolina and Tennessee also experienced flooding and tornadoes. This super hurricane not only claimed dozens of lives, but also plunged millions of people into power outages and disasters. Although the authorities conducted large-scale evacuations in advance, Hurricane Helen still caused serious casualties and property losses. According to statistics, at least 43 people died in this storm, including 5 in Florida, 15 in Georgia, 17 in South Carolina, and 2 in North Carolina. In affected areas, emergency crews conducted thousands of water rescue operations to save people submerged in floods. In Georgia, rescue crews had to use chainsaws to clear debris and open roads, as damage and debris blocked their path to stranded people. Rescuers in Atlanta also helped a couple, their children and two dogs reach safety in higher ground. The U.S. Coast Guard also participated in the emergency rescue. They rescued a stranded man and his dog from a 36-foot sailboat. The Federal Emergency Management Agency also sent more than 1,500 workers to the disaster area, and as of late morning, they had assisted in rescuing 400 people. Thank you for liking, leaving comments, subscribing and turning on the little bell, we will update every day. Meanwhile, authorities are also assessing the property damage caused by the disaster. Moody's Analytics expects losses to be between 15 billion US dollars and 26 billion US dollars. This number far exceeds the combined losses caused by Hurricane Idalia in 2023 and Debbie last year. Florida Governor DeSantis said that those counties that were truly at the center of the storm had suffered more damage than the previous two hurricanes combined. There has been significant damage across the state, with flooding mainly on the west coast and peninsula, he said. It can be said that Hurricane Helen caused the most severe damage to the southeastern United States in decades. 
The torrential storm claimed dozens of lives, destroyed a large number of homes and infrastructure, and caused billions of dollars in economic losses. Despite the best efforts of rescue workers, they were unable to prevent this nightmare, natural disaster from bringing huge disaster to the local community. Scientists agreed that climate change largely contributed to Hurricane Helen's destructive power, specifically manifested in two aspects. First, global warming has caused record high seawater temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. Brian McNoldy, a senior researcher at the University of Miami, pointed out that in 2024, temperatures across the North Atlantic hit record highs, providing super fuel for this powerful tropical cyclone. Before Hurricane Helene made landfall, sea surface temperatures in the area were as high as 89 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 to 4 degrees higher than normal. These unusually warm waters provide the hurricane with a large amount of heat and water vapor, allowing it to quickly intensify into a Category 4 storm. In addition, climate change is exacerbating the extreme rainfall caused by hurricanes. Scientists say climate change is causing an increase in the frequency and intensity of heavy rain events. In Georgia, Atlanta received a record amount of rainfall in a 48-hour period, exceeding any record since 1878. This downpour, combined with saturated ground, leads to severe flooding. Experts warn that as long as human activities continue to drive climate change, such powerful, destructive hurricane events will become more common. Residents along the Gulf Coast and inland areas will face more frequent and dangerous storms in the future. Hurricane Helen is undoubtedly the most powerful and destructive natural disaster to hit the southeastern United States in recent years. The Category 4 storm not only set off alarming storm surges in the Big Bend region of Florida, but also brought catastrophic flooding and tornadoes to Georgia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Although the authorities were fully prepared in advance and issued mandatory evacuation orders, many stubborn residents still chose to stay and face this unsurvivable storm. As a result, dozens of people died in the storm and millions were left in the grip of power outages and disasters. Sadly, these powerful, destructive hurricane events are becoming increasingly common. Scientists agree that climate change is to blame. Rising ocean temperatures due to global warming provide a super fuel for hurricanes, allowing them to rapidly intensify to unprecedented intensity. At the same time, the frequency and intensity of extreme rainfall events are also on the rise, exacerbating flood disasters. We must face up to the threats posed by climate change and take effective measures to slow down this process. Only in this way can we reduce the damage and losses caused by super hurricanes like Helen in the future and protect residents in coastal and even inland areas from such huge disasters. The frequent threat of hurricane disasters in various regions of the United States is an important issue worthy of in-depth discussion. According to meteorological data and research reports, the southeastern coastal areas of the United States and parts of the Midwest are the areas most vulnerable to hurricanes. First, Florida is undoubtedly one of the most hurricane-prone states in the United States. In September 2022, the powerful Hurricane Ian devastated most of Florida, killing at least 125 people and causing nearly 100 billion US dollars in property losses. In fact, Florida is hit by at least one hurricane every year on average, and sometimes multiple times. According to statistics from the US National Hurricane Center, Florida was hit by 66 hurricanes between 1851 and 2020, including 28 severe hurricanes. 
it can be said that Florida is one of the most vulnerable areas in the United States to hurricane disasters. Secondly, Texas is also one of the hurricane-prone areas. In 2017, powerful Hurricane Harvey hit Texas, causing more than $80 billion in damage, becoming one of the most costly hurricanes on record. In addition, according to statistics, Texas has been hit by 68 hurricanes since 1851, including 20 severe hurricanes. It can be seen that Texas is also extremely vulnerable to hurricanes and damage. At the same time, Louisiana is also an area frequently hit by hurricanes. In 2020, the powerful Hurricane Delta hit Louisiana hard, killing 55 people and causing property losses of 20 billion US dollars. According to statistics, since 1851, Louisiana has been hit by 59 hurricanes, including 16 severe hurricanes. It can be seen that Louisiana is also one of the most vulnerable areas in the United States to hurricane disasters. In addition, North Carolina is also an area prone to hurricanes. In 2018, Hurricane Florence devastated the state, causing 51 deaths and $17 billion in property damage. According to statistics, North Carolina has been hit by 55 hurricanes since 1851, including 15 severe hurricanes. It can be said that North Carolina is also an area in the United States that is extremely vulnerable to hurricanes. It is worth mentioning that Alabama and Mississippi are also hurricane-prone areas. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated these two states, causing more than 1,800 deaths and more than $125 billion in property damage. According to statistics, since 1851, Alabama has been hit by 47 hurricanes, including 14 severe hurricanes, Mississippi has been hit by 51 hurricanes, including 14 severe hurricanes. It can be seen that these two states are also areas in the United States that are vulnerable to hurricane disasters. It cannot be ignored that the Midwestern region of the United States is not completely immune to the threat of hurricanes. In 2022, Missouri suffered from the powerful Hurricane Allen, causing six deaths and nearly one billion US dollars in losses. According to statistics, Missouri has been hit by 28 hurricanes since 1851, including six severe hurricanes. In addition, Arkansas and Kansas were also hit by hurricanes in the Midwest. In 2011, powerful tornadoes struck Arkansas and Kansas, killing 178 people. It can be seen that the Midwestern region of the United States is not completely immune to the threat of hurricanes and tornadoes. What is particularly important is that in addition to causing casualties and property losses, frequent hurricane disasters can also cause serious damage to the local economy, infrastructure and ecosystems. Hurricanes will not only destroy houses, roads and power systems, but may also interrupt water and food supplies, causing great distress to residents' lives. In addition, hurricanes may also damage local agricultural and forest resources and cause environmental disasters. Therefore, all regions in the United States should pay attention to the prevention and response of hurricane disasters and take effective measures to reduce the losses caused by hurricanes. In recent years, different regions of the United States have been frequently hit by severe hurricanes causing serious casualties and property losses. First, we need to pay attention to Hurricane Harvey in 2017. The hurricane made landfall in Texas in August and subsequently wreaked havoc in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee. According to statistics, 
Hurricane Harvey caused 90 deaths and direct economic losses of up to 90 billion US dollars, making it one of the most costly hurricanes in the history of the United States. In addition, the hurricane caused power outages to more than 300,000 households and severely damaged local infrastructure and agriculture. Secondly, it is worth mentioning Hurricane Florence in 2018. The hurricane made landfall in North Carolina in September and later caused severe damage in South Carolina and Virginia. According to the report, Hurricane Florence caused 51 deaths and direct economic losses of up to 17 billion US dollars. The hurricane also caused power outages to about 500,000 households and severely damaged local roads, power systems and agricultural facilities. At the same time, Hurricane Delta in 2020 also dealt a heavy blow to Louisiana. The hurricane made landfall in the state in October, killing 55 people and causing direct economic losses of 20 billion US dollars. In addition, Hurricane Delta caused power outages to more than 600,000 households and caused severe damage local agriculture and fisheries. In addition, the damage caused to Florida by Hurricane Ian in September 2022 cannot be ignored. According to statistics, this powerful hurricane caused at least 125 deaths and caused direct economic losses of nearly 100 billion US dollars, making it one of the most destructive hurricanes on record. Shockingly, Hurricane Ian also caused power outages to more than 3 million households, seriously affecting local transportation, communications and water supply systems. What is particularly important is that these severe hurricanes not only caused a large number of casualties and property losses, but also had a major impact on the local economy, society, and ecological environment. For example, Hurricane Harvey destroyed large areas of farmland and fisheries in the coastal areas of Texas and Louisiana, causing serious losses to local agriculture and fisheries. Hurricane Florence caused massive flooding in North and South Carolina, causing damage to hundreds of bridges and highways. It is worth noting that these natural disasters may also trigger disease outbreaks and environmental pollution, further exacerbating local social problems. What is even more noteworthy is that these severe hurricanes often have long-term impacts on the economic development and residents' lives in the affected areas. For example, Hurricane Harvey caused a sharp decline in economic growth in Texas and Louisiana over the next year, while Hurricane Florence caused job losses in North and South Carolina. Rate increased significantly. In addition, these hurricane disasters may also exacerbate local poverty and social inequality, putting tremendous pressure on local public services and infrastructure construction. What cannot be ignored is that these severe hurricane disasters also caused serious damage to the local natural ecosystem. For example, Hurricane Harvey destroyed large tracts of mangroves and wetlands along the coasts of Texas and Louisiana while Hurricane Florence destroyed coral reefs along the coasts of North and South Carolina, and massive loss of marine life. These ecological damages not only seriously affect the local tourism industry, but also threaten the lifestyle and food security of local residents. Hurricanes, a violent force of nature, often bring devastating damage. In the face of such a powerful natural disaster, people's response measures are crucial, especially in outdoor environments. First, it is crucial to understand the basic characteristics of hurricanes. A hurricane is a tropical cyclone with central wind speeds exceeding 119 km per hour. They are often accompanied by heavy rainfall, storm surges and tornadoes, which combine to cause widespread damage. 
The United States has been hit by more than 200 hurricanes since 1900, killing more than 40,000 people and causing more than $1 trillion in economic damage, according to the National Hurricane Center. Secondly, timely access to weather forecast information is the key to outdoor risk avoidance. Modern technology provides us with multiple channels for obtaining weather information such as television, radio, the internet and mobile applications. The National Weather Service NWS, issues hurricane warnings and watches, and staying informed can help people make informed decisions. It is worth mentioning that the NWS hurricane warning system has successfully saved countless lives. Thank you for liking, leaving a message, subscribing and turning on the little bell. We will update the latest news from around the world every day. Continue to use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events.